my kids, it's Dresser James, and Dresser James looking at the Gallia Ceratops. So, I bought this one a while ago, and this came out, so I'm like, well, now I have to do it. I have at least two, right? So, first and foremost with this guy, this animal, it was in 2005 in Canada. A, a geologist named Peter Huzai was, was hiking along, and he ran into this, a, a, a bone fragments. He knew it was something important. He told the museum, uh, the, Royal, the Royal Terrell Museum, they went out there in 2005 and six to dig it up. Uh, Fun fact, that the nickname of this animal, uh, based on this tiny little horns of, of the brow, and the conditions it took to dig it out, was called Hellboy, like the uh, the fictional character. And so the idea here was, because there, it, it, was a, it was a hillside, like a, like a steep kind of hillside, and a lake there, and the area was protected, so if the, if the people who were digging out essentially could not get any of the sediment into the lake. And I can tell you from experience that when you're digging for fossils and you have extra rock and what we call overburton, you put those in buckets and things or wheelbarrows or, you know, and you throw them over the cliff, you get, you get rid of it, right? So they couldn't do that, make it even more difficult. Uh, they only found the skull, uh, and the idea behind that is it's like, well, they dug what they could, got it out, they're trying to go back it more and all that, but in general, if they did not find, if they wanted to dig more, if there were more there to see, obviously, they'd probably still be digging right now, probably, right? So uh, the animal was named in 2015, and it's the name Regalia Ceratops Regal, as in means royal, ceratops means a horn-faced dinosaur, which we'll go over that in a minute in more detail. And I have a video on that already, so heads up. And so, and of course, uh, it's a really unique animal. So when I first, this is a 2018 safari. I do know there's a beast as a Mesozoic one, and I've seen pictures of it, it looks pretty accurate too, so if you're going to get one of those, go go there too. Uh, I personally bought this one because I thought, first of all, it was just so amazing. It, man, I looked at this figure, it was super exciting. Uh, if you Google image it, you'll see pictures of this animal, and usually the really, really nice one is from Julius Stonis, who is a artist who has worked for the Houston Museum of Natural Science. He's done Canada's Money or Stamps. He, I see his name a lot when you're doing paleontology art stuff, right? So... Here's the animal, and now one thing to point out, they only have a skull, so this is essentially direct information. The body itself uh, is, you know, ceratopsians for the most part, hornosaurs have the same body for the, for the most part. There's a couple of exceptions here or there, and so they're not really guessing that much. On the foot, there are four toes, there's three, well, let's put a foot, let's see, it would be like three big ones and a little kind of a smaller one on the inside, that's pretty accurate. On the forelimb, you have your three bear claws and then your two little nubs on the side. So that's something that we can see in mini ceratopsians. so it's like, why not? Given this guy is from the Lake Cretaceous, the uh, Maastrichtian from Canada, uh, the, thinks the St. Mary River formation. And so uh, the idea here is that this body makes sense. Now, some of you may have seen this go, wait a minute, how do you know if it's from the Maastrichtian, North America, how do you know it's not a juvenile triceratops? And the answer is, where it's living, we don't find triceratops, and also it's an adult. Like, so, in histology, you study dinosaur bones in general, histology. But for dinosaurs, you can see that when animals are growing, uh, just like trees have rings, they have these different layers. Uh, dinosaurs slow growing towards what we consider adulthood. They, they can still grow sometimes, but they still they slow down. And so this animal seems to be an adult too. Now, that being said, um, again, if you're ordering one or buying one, I assume the prehistoric beast figure is really good, the company. But I this guy here, this safari is... Uh, Magnifique, Perfecto, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, 2018 Safari. Uh, here we have the Jurassic World one, and of course it's going to be exaggerated, right? Like, like I said, this is this is your model. This is what you want to base everything on. When you're drawing it, if you're doing any kind of, you know, it's, it's the picture for my, my website, so, for this animal. So with the official scissors, Jurassic James, we will free the beast. Let's see. It's not that hard, actually, so. Let's see here. Go. She's alive, alive. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So again, the tail, but the tail is in the back here. I'm guessing this is not only a packaging thing, but by having a tail, not be harder to get that it discourages theft. And so the box. There's no capture gear. So the box is now discarded. For safety reasons, we received the official scissors, Jurassic James. They go away. So same as before. Take the tail, you plug it in, okay. turn and then click. Also, I don't really like the ones that make noises. Uh, also, the turn, because we don't know what they sound like anyway. Uh, but I get for kids, I get it, yeah. 
So the turn into click reference, if you don't, if you always want to know why I say that, it's because a movie called Small Soldiers came out in the '90s, and one of the the toy soldiers they put like war grade chips in them, thing come alive. So it's like not Toy Story. And so uh, one of the soldiers got damaged, and they were looking at this. It was kind of parody comedy. They were looking at the toy's instructions to fix the figure. It's like turn, don't click, you know, kind of thing. That's why I always say that. Uh, this guy has the feathers on the back on the back side. Again, uh, we only found the head. So. <laughs> We being paleontology in general, the Royal, well, in this case, they, the Royal uh, Toronto Museum. And so we don't know if they had that. Again, that's something that's kind of on the, on, the, on the new front of Ceratopsian uh, studies. Uh, the feet have, and, and the hands have, so they have given it the, what I call the generic toy design, Ceratopsian. Like you have your four fingers, four toes kind of thing. And they're all equal size, like elephant kind of, but kind of claw-like. Whereas I showed you with the more accurate one from Safari, there's a different size. I mean, get in, there, get in there. There's a different size and shape to the feet, basically, and the hands. That's a different color, like coloration. So um, that's kind of a, a loose. So uh, just in general, <clears throat> toy information, DNA code, because it's important to kids these days. They like this stuff. I don't understand why you can't just have a toy. But I know for screen devices, the company's trying to keep up. I like that actually. So it, so many of the others you turn that little switch in the back and they just do this. This one pulls in a little bit, which is not like accurate scientifically, but it's kind of cool because it reminds me of like a, like a rapper, like a person doing like mistakes. I don't know. It's a lot. So again, the big thing with this guy, the big standout where we got our favorite tops are first of all these things here. They're called Epi. I would have trouble saying that Epi. So, here, you know, this is the age of everything. So, I should, I should, I should. Epoxipitals. 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 Epox, you say it too. Epoxipitals. Epoxipitals. So, these little things here, these little hornlets, like, like structures on the back of the Frilloceratopsian. These guys, essentially, this has some of the biggest ones in his, group, fam, in his family group. And so, it has really small brow horns and a longer nose horn. Now, if you ever Google image the skeleton or a picture of the skeleton of of this animal. The, the frill, the face would be more crushed up and the frill turned up. Remember when animals were fossilized, they get buried, they get crushed, they get kind of twisted around sometimes. So the paleontologist, not only having a new animal, had to look at that and figure out like what happened there, but also kind of deconstruct, well, it must have been like this, looking at its relatives. So again, when it was discovered, it took about 18 months or a year and a half to prep, which means removing from the rock, and then uh, the papers come in. And so papers are important. I, I always reference papers, but I never tell you what, that, what they are. So a paper basically is, this skeleton or remains are in a museum. And not everyone in the world can go to that museum. So you have to write a paper. First of all, you do imaging, drawing, scanning. Well, a long time ago, you just drew the skeletons. Today, you still can. But people usually do, do photographs. They do scans, you know, online stuff. And then they have to write a paper as if the person who's reading it will never see the skeleton, but must understand the skeleton. So think about your most descriptive paper you've ever written in school, in times by 20 probably, uh, unless you're a lawyer watching this. And so the idea is that this is something that is very, very important because it's how the world sees your skeleton and how you get peer reviewed when other scientists will debate or argue different points of view and all that. So, uh, so, so anyway, that's a tangent. So anyway, look at this animal here. First and foremost, I, like I said, I like them both. Very cool animals. Again, this one is gold. This is perfect. And so, as far as the environment goes, and I want to remind you that when I show you the ecology of these animals, I'm only showing you the ecology, showing the species that are in my collection or usually they're toys of. I do have a lot of toys that are not normally on sale places. So do know when I show you these animals that it's living with, it doesn't mean those are the only animals to live with. There are other dinosaurs that, for example, Montana Ceratops is found with this guy. But I have no toy of one. I can't find a toy of one, so I won't show it to you. So as far as contemporaries, and I'm going to, I'm going to again, to appease my uh, children fans, I have the Jurassic World one, and to appease my adult fans, I have the model here. You know who you are. So Jurassic World created a Sinoceratops a long time ago, but it was really a Pachyrhinoceros. So I will never have a video on Sinoceratops already, look it up. But I'm using this guy as a Pachyrhinoceros because he looks like, he looks like... Pachyrhinoceros. It still, it still makes me angry. I don't know why. The point is, what's well, wrong? That's probably why. Because I saw the name Sound Ceratops on the box. I was like, oh, excited. And I saw the animals. Like, they lied. So here we have Safari 2014 Pachyrhinoceros. So these guys are contemporaries. They're living in the same environment, same conditions. Another example of this, which is not Jurassic World 
I've shown is a Edmontonia. So Edmontonia is what we call a Notosaur. So we own Colosaurs in general, but the Notosaurs don't have clubs and they have more armor going forward. This is not the best model of one, but it's still a model of one. This is a 2010 from Collect A Edmontonia. So again, this is your more specific model. So again, the, I'm, I'm going to put this one. <laughs> I'm going to put this one with the Jurassic World ones because, you know, they're all kind of off for accuracy. So here we have this. As far as Big Predator, we have a guy named Albertosaurus. And Albertosaurus is um, from Alberta, Canada. So the idea... I don't know why I said that weird. So the idea here is this is a 2003 Carnegie. There are not a lot of Albertosaurus figures. So I only have like, like this one, an older one, and some of these guys. So they're not really made a lot of them, unfortunately. And so, well, and the other companies I don't buy from, actually. So they're found together. And then there's Troodon. Now, Troodon should be a video in itself. I'm looking for more figures, and also there's a lot more papers to read. But as far as Jurassic World goes, we have a, a naked Troodon right here that I forgot that I have. In fact, I was getting my Troodons out of my North American Canadian Cretaceous, Lake Cretaceous, and I was like, I thought I had one, and I thought, oh yeah, I, had, I, forgot, I forgot I had this guy. And so, naked all the way through, I mean, but the human idea about, uh, I, I say naked because it does have feathers, it should have feathers. So, in my mind, I do a lot of modern analogies. So, if raptors, dromaeosaurs, are like wolves, troodonts are like jackals. They're, they're usually, with a few exceptions, they're usually a smaller version. They also have, they also have the physical claw to plastic fix up, right? So they're they're like the smaller version of the of the raptors, and also they're a little bit smarter. Now whether or not I don't know if jackals are smarter than wolves, I just know that you know there's different size size ranges. But uh, as far as other Troy Knight figures, I have this one from uh, Hobby Lobby, and this from Mojo, a newer company. Does it have a year? No a year. So it's it's, it's, a, it's a Mojo one here. Uh, not to scale with these guys. <laughs> it's Troy Knights usually way smaller. And then there's the walking with dinosaurs throw it on this little guy here, which I bought at Dinosaur Park. And if you haven't seen my description below, um, I, I don't uh, sell anything, but I, but I have friends at Dinosaur Park in Bastrop, Texas. You can go there, you can order stuff online. I have it online in my, my link description. So, so again, this guy should be way smaller, but in general, you're seeing the animals in toy form that our Galeoceratops live with. Now, I'm going to move these guys over and focus on the Jurassic World for just a second before I do something else. So again, this is your, not counting you, this is your Jurassic World <laughs> lineup, right? This is a, they're in the same environment, same time, same formation. Really cool. Um, I know most of you don't care about that, but I really do. So, and again, I'll put a link below of the Lake Cretaceous on my website. You can see this little line of animals living together. Uh, but I do use the science models, not the Jurassic World models. Now, that being said, we're going to go over a couple more things. Now, family, as you know, just like Fast and Furious, it's all about the family. So who... And how, because that's actually, to, for me personally, that's what's really interesting about this animal, is this family tree. Now, to keep up the same two, two stories, one, one story, two versions, we have the Jurassic World one and then the, the normal science one. So, in Ceratopsia, the horn dinosaurs, as the, the horned ones are found, except for two species in the rest of the world in North America, there are unhorned, non-horned, <laughs> Okay, I'll say it this way. So here, Protoceratops, this little guy here, who I just realized I had not done a video on. It's like, interesting. I, I will do one at some point, pretty pretty soon. I have a new one over there. Uh, so Protoceratops is like, okay, it's actually a contemporary or close contemporary or some of the later ones, but its form shows the early Ceratopsian design. Hence the name Protoceratops, you know, first horned face. So we get to North America about 90 million years ago, and we have, and I've already done a video on this guy too, Zuniceratops, this little guy here. I say little guy, it's size of a cow, but little for Ceratopians, you know, who are usually kind of rhinos. So this guy is this, not, we don't want to say direct ancestry, but we see something like it. It's like, okay, this is an earlier form to later forms. So within Ceratopsia, there are two branches. One, there are the uh, Chasmosaurines, which include, you'll never guess, this is going to be a big spoiler, a Chasmosaurus. This is a Jurassic, World, Jurassic Park 2 from like the 90s. And here's a two, uh, this is why I have my lamp here that my mom bought me, because I'm getting older and the lighting's weird and it's a whole bunch of shadows here. And so there is, this is a 2009 Collect 8. So these guys are Chasmosaurians, named, you know, they have these long, they have, in general, they have usually three horns. Uh, the brow horns are usually longer than the nose horn, and the frill 
up here is really, really elongated, right? So that's Chastosaurus. Uh, then we have Pentaceratops. This is a Papa. I've done a video on this guy already. And here's a Jurassic World version of that. And so there's this guy. And then the least or under, un, a surprising member of this group, Chastosaurian group, are the Triceratops. So here's the Jurassic World Triceratops. This has been repainted so many times. I, I, I bought like three different repaints. I'm like, okay, I'm done. So, and here is my favorite version of this. Uh, this is a Safari 2018. This is my example. Of a good, I, I wouldn't say perfect, but close to, this is like the most perfect Triceratops figure I have. So, uh, look into that if you want to get one that's really accurate. I think the species is Triceratops hortus. So, there's only two species now. And so, and hortus is the first one found and it remains. So those are the Chastisaurians, and there's, there's many more like them. I have, a, again, a, a page on this, my website. Uh, I'll link below. And so, what is this? To find a uh, Regeneratops family, click here. It'll be there. Then there's the Centrosaurians. The Centrosaurians are a d the different branch, and they include, this is the Styracosaurus, which is really, really popular. It is a 2019 safari. And so this guy is Styracosaurus from Canada. And here's the Jurassic World variant, which is weird because it should be the same size as these guys, but they made it smaller. I don't know why. Uh, another example, I've done a video already on Diablo Ceratops, the devil lizard, <laughs> devil, devil horn face. And this is a 2000 and... Wait, wrong way. 2000 and... There's no year. Oh, it's Schleit, that's why. Okay. Yeah, so Schleit. This is a really nice one, too. Uh, and then we have the Nesuta Ceratops. This is a gift from the Vanderpool family. And so this is a 2015 new Pseudoceratops from a company, Safari. So, and then, of course, here's the Jurassic World one, which they only made, like, a few of them, apparently. They're really hard to find more of. Now, what's the big deal? The Centrosaurians, in general, have smaller, if, no, if not no, no, no sorns. In fact, the Pachyrhinoceros falls in the Centrosaurian group, right? And where's your, where's your contemporary? So, this, so, again, these guys usually have bigger uh, ep, epic... Uh, I don't know why I can't. My brain's just not. It's like I'm not today. Epoxipitals. Bigger epoxipitals. 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 <laughs> there you go. We're not doing that anymore, okay? I'm not going to mention it again. You know what they are. So the point is, uh, these guys, if you look at them in general, they either have no nose horn or they have a, lar or a larger nose horn than their brow horn. And they usually have larger epoxipitals on the, on the back, right? Whereas these guys usually have small epoxipitals and the brow horn's much longer, right? And so these are the two branches. And in general, what's really important about this, for the most part, this is really big picture stuff, if you look at the late Cretaceous period where they're found, again, these kind of ceratopsians, not counting this guy, are only within 20 million years. The last 20 million years of, of, of dinosaur evolution, late Cretaceous. And if you look at like the sauropod long necks or predatory theropods, they were some of the earlier dinosaurs involved, so they, they're found all over the world because Pangaea was together back then. There are dinosaurs everywhere. The continents work apart. The Ceratopsians didn't really evolve to where we can recognize them really easily until like Cretaceous. So the continents are already broken apart, isolating these guys to only Asia and North America, right? And so all of a sudden we, we find them, and again, even North America, we have the, the, the ocean cutting North America in half. And so that makes it even harder, uh, you know, like it kind of separates them even more. And so we have Regalia Ceratops, and what do you mean? Well, here's the thing with this guy. This guy, looking at it, Superficially, without any papers or anything like that, your first assumption, if you knew more paleontology, I assume you do, you would think, oh, it's a, it's a, it's a centrosaurian. That's kind of a rounder frill. It has a longer nose horn. It has shorter brow horns. But if you look at other... So when I mention families, and uh, you know, we, we think of family. Think of it this way. Think of... Um, you think of dogs. There's all kind of wolves, coyotes, foxes, all that. You have cats, lions, tigers, bears. No, lions, tigers, leopards. Uh, you have big bears. You have pandas, black bear, all that, right? There's the same thing with dinosaurs, right? And so... To be a bear, you and I can look at a bear and look at a, look at a cat and go, okay, but that's but you're different, you know. But when you want to write it out, I mean, imagine you're talking to an alien and you're saying, there's these, these things called bears and cats. And the alien's like, what's the difference between them two before I enslave your species? And you say, well, one, they have fur, they walk on four legs, they have whiskers, they both have that. So in science, you make sure you're writing very specific features, very specific thing to, to group each group together. And so, at a sort of official glance, you would say, oh, that's very similar to this. But there's a thing called conversion evolution. So, if you look at the features of Regalia ceratops, where it fits in the family tree, is actually on the Chathosaurine side. There's a number of features here that show that. But it has Citrosaurine features. And you're like, well, how did... <laughs> so, the idea here is, well, the prevailing theory here is, if you look at this, the evolutionary line on a chart, 
And there's a wonderful lecture I'm going to link to as well. If we're going to line on a chart, you'll see centrothorines essentially going extinct earlier, before the end. Say, say the end of my table here is like when the uh, dinosaurs went extinct, they were particularly Cretaceous. So these guys, let me put a little further back here and there. So, uh, and Diabloceratops is way older. I should put that up here more and like that. And I know, I know like, in your brain, you're like, what are you doing? But it, it makes sense, trust me. So, say this is like, you know, earlier, 90, 80, like going further. So, these guys go extinct before these guys do. And so, whatever this plan is, it seems to work less. This replaces it. But Citrosaurus, uh, sorry, Citrosaurus, or Geliceratops, cinch essentially is converging to look like these guys. So it does have a very, I mean, this frill actually is, in my opinion, I mean, look at the, this one, look at that one. This is actually an inaccuracy that the frill will be that tall. It's really should be more round like this, more like Triceratops. And so what's going on is that the Chasmosaurian line began to spawn or sprout, derive, um, relatives that look like the Centrosaurian. So that's something I had to point out in the end that's, that's really neat because, and what, see, why, why am I telling you this on a Saturday morning? Uh, because... When you look at these things, you don't want to assume in paleontology. You, you don't want to, oh, it must be that. Because when you first look, you go, oh, it must be, your first off, maybe it's a juvenile triceratops. Or maybe it's, but you look at the time scale where it's found, where it lives, you know, that, so it's not. You look at the bones and say, well, no, they're too well developed. And then you say, well, it's must be a citrosaurine. Well, no, it's not, because it, the, the features and details say otherwise. And so that's what's really cool about this animal, in my opinion, because it shows, again, this, this evolutionary trend that, of convergent evolution, which is really neat. And let me be wrong, the, the, if I didn't define it, uh, convergent evolution is when two different animals have similar features based on their environment. So for example, sharks are like sharks, and ichthyosaurs are marine reptiles who breathe air that look like fish, and dolphins are marine mammals that look like fish, essentially, in some ways. I mean, and so these three groups of animals are not related to each other directly, I mean, they're all vertebrates, but, but they're very distinctly related, yet they have fins and flippers. So they're all it, converging to live in the same environment, right? And so what's going on here is that micro scale, and that was the big with dolphin, but this guy and somewhat triceratops are converging to have frills more like these guys. Yet triceratops retain the chasmosaurian big brown horns, this guy did not. And so that's exciting. You know, I mean, I, know, I don't know. Okay. Um, I'm going to stop talking now because I'm going to keep talking. I think I'm on over the YouTube normal time limit. Uh, any questions or comments, put them below. Uh, if you like what you're seeing, if this kind of information is important to you, if it's just the environment, it's just seeing the toys, let me know too because I don't know what you guys want. I just like talking about this stuff. So <laughs> that being said, I'll see you later.